Hello and welcome back to another standard video here in the preview event for Bloomboro. So thanks again to Wizards for having me. Today we're taking a look at a black-white life gain bats deck, which gets to combine some of the older bats from Ixalan, like Rune Lurker bat and of course the Deep Cavern bat with a ton of new additions. One of the main payoffs is the Cosmos Caller, a 3-mana three 3-3 three, three legendary bat cleric with flying and vigilance. Whenever a bat we control attacks, we gain one life, and whenever Zorlin enters or attacks, we get to pay a black and a white and two life to return target a non-land permanent card with mana value 3 or less from our graveyard to the battlefield with a finality counter on it. So this is a great way to get back our creatures as well as some of our non-creature permanents such as maybe a case of the uneaten feast after sacrificing it. So this can also be a great way to enable some of our life gain synergies and then later also get back multiple creatures from the graveyard as long as we've solved the case. And then getting back the case can once again enable us to get back a bunch of creatures. So there's a lot of synergy there. Then another great card here is the Dark Star Augur. Reminiscent of a Dark Confident, we get to reveal the top card at the beginning of our upkeep, and then we lose life equal to its mana value. So it can be a little bit painful at times, but if you take a look at the general curve in our deck, it's quite low. So we expect to maybe lose one and a half life for each Augur trigger, you could say. And then we can also cast it with Offspring, meaning we get an additional 1-1 version of it. So now we get two of those triggers each turn, which of course can start adding up, but also provides a ton of card advantage and then we can usually balance it out with all the other life gain synergies so we don't lose to our own dark star auger and then a gix is another great way to draw a lot of cards in this deck since we have all these flying creatures hitting the opponent so now we can pay one life to draw a card for each one of them and then we have another life gain payoff with Essence Channeler, a 2-mana two 2-1. Two as long as we've lost life this turn, Channeler has Flying and Vigilance. Pretty easy to enable if we have cards like Augur on the battlefield, but we also have some Pain Lands in our mana base, which I'll go over in a second. And then whenever we gain life, we can put a plus one plus one counter on the Channeler, and when it dies, we can move all of its counters onto another target creature we control, which is a very nice addition here, as we can maybe move all those counters onto a lifelink creature instead. And then we also have the Starscape Cleric, which is a 2-1 that cannot block, also has Offspring, although it's pretty pricey at 2 and a black, and then says whenever we gain life, each opponent loses one life. So this can turn into a very real win condition, especially when paired with Case of the Uneaten Feast, or perhaps our Legendary Bat. And then I'm also playing two copies of the Lunar Convocation as a two-mana enchantment, saying at the beginning of our end step, if we gain life this turn, each opponent loses one life. Pretty easy to enable. And at the beginning of our end step, if we both gained and lost life this turn, we get to make a 1-1 Flying Bat token. And this is a little trickier to enable at times, since we do need both a life gain synergies as well as ways to lose life in play. But that's once again where the Pain Lands will come in handy. Or we can also use the ability for one on a black, pay two life and draw card. So once again another card draw engine to complement the Augur and Gix. So this deck tends to draw quite a few cards. And then we have a bit of removal as well with Go for the Throat. And then as we mentioned in our mana base we've got two copies of Thran Portal to complement our four copies of Caves of Koilos. So these are also important ways for us to lose life intentionally sometimes just to enable cards like Lunar Convocation or Essence Channeler to gain Flying and Vigilance potentially even during the opponent's turn if we need it back on defense. And then we also have two copies of Restless Fortress turning into a creature that can also gain us some life to maybe enable some of those synergies. And then two copies of the Mud Flat Village which we can sacrifice to return a bat from our graveyard to our hand. Now this doesn't help us cast our non-creature spells, so it won't cast a Lunar Convocation or go for the Throat, so that's why I'm not playing the full playset of the Mudflat Village, but it certainly has its moments. And then we still have a couple basics here and Concealed Courtyard. Could also make room for Cavern of Souls to make our creatures uncounterable, but once again we sort of run into some trouble if we're trying to cast our Lunar Convocation early, or if we need colored mana for our removal spells. So there is certainly still a drawback to including Cavern of Souls in this deck, especially with Gix also requiring double black. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw. We've got what looks like a keeper. May need another black source eventually. For now, we're looking at maybe a turn to Deep Cavern Bat. Opponent on frogs. Okay. Don't think Scribe is a must-answer threat, so we'll have a look first and see another Scribe. We've got just one one draw card. 
mutation as a counter spell, and then Entrancer can keep something locked down, including their own stuff to draw to. So Entrancer and the mutation are the most problematic cards. If they keep up mutation next turn, we can just keep up go for the throats. So maybe it's not that bad. So I think Entrancer then might be the pick. As it also has reach, so it can get in the way of our bats. Opponent playing the Prophets and not keeping up mutation. So now I could play Gix and start drawing extra cards. And then wait on Augur until we can play it with Offspring, perhaps. I will start losing quite a bit of life to my own effects as well. But this is one way to beat a counter spell, just draw more threats. And then the uh, Cosmos Caller can gain us some life back. So how about I play a case and then play Cosmos Caller. And then maybe next turn we'll play this either with or without Offspring alongside a Channeler. Seems fine. And we'll draw, finding another Augur. So we're in decent shape. You can also see the lily pad village to surveil to. And now Mist Breath Elder, a way to pick up the Prophets. And that will give them some plus one counters with Double Scribe. But I'm now keeping up the mutation. All right, so step one might be to play a Channeler. Could also go for Augur, get that countered, and keep up, go for the throats. Or I can play two channelers. We'll see what they do. Right, mutation for two. And then we'll start by attacking. And then I'm likely just going to go for the throat, scribe. And I guess I could also pay two to get channeler back, which is interesting. Um... Now let's just go for the throat here. Otherwise I get to trigger the scribe next turn. And find another case we can play. And then I'll pick up the prophets, get a plus one counter on both of their creatures. And they can replay it to draw, but that's fine. Could see the argument for holding go for the throat in case they find another entrancer to get in the way. But then we can maybe start growing the channeler. Opponent passes once again with a bunch of mana untapped. So can cast channeler if they counter it. I just uh, get one back out of the graveyard. Could also go for augur, maybe without offspring to keep more mana available. Kind of want to get the channelers going though. And then there's no reason to lose life to my own Caves of Coilos, I don't think. Since I don't need Flying and Vigilance right now. Right, another mutation. So the Scribe's getting pretty big. Now we have to decide between Augur or get back Channeler. Getting back Channeler I think is better when we have double case in play. And then we might draw something else useful. Go for the throat I currently cannot cast, since my lands all enter tapped. But now double case is solved. And we're in decent shape. Replay profits. So they've got a nice card draw engine going, but we've got more than one. Haven't even had the chance to play Augur, which could draw some more cards as well. So for a black-white deck, this uh, bat deck does draw quite a few cards. All right, the Port Mage can also draw more cards if they flicker their stuff or bounce them. 
and another splash portal. All right, so they get to draw three cards here for one mana. One of Prophet, one of Portal, one of Port Mage, and they get an extra plus one counter as well. So they're going off. Although at this point I can give up on Gix if we really wanted to. Take our turn. Play Augur. Could do it with Offspring if I tap carefully. And leap up go for the throats. And that's one massive essence channeler. And could pay another two life to get back another one. Getting to see all the triggers. All right, sweet. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. We have our Rune Lurker, Bats, both our colors, so yeah, I'll keep. Turn to Cleric and immediately drain the opponent for one. And then hopefully we'll get to three mana for the Augur. Although we could also double spell another Rune Lurker with Cleric. Okay, so for now, play Starscape Cleric. And then we'll see what Fabled Passage gets. Fabled Passage also potentially a way to enable Descend on some of the creatures from Ixalan. Alright, put on Black Green with a food deck and maybe Squirrels. We're just gonna try and fly over. And the Convocation's pretty nice here since we can lose life to cast it. And then gain life to enable it end of turn and play another rune lurker and then make another bank token end of turn so we're going nice and wide and then we still have some decent leftovers cleric also adds up with two life linking creatures in play so just take three And the Thran Portal, more ways to gain life, although it will enter tapped now as a drawback. So what do we want to do? Probably just play another Startscape and wait on Augur until we can play it with Offspring. And then I should have paid life to the Caves of Koilos instead of just tapping it for Colorless. Since now we're not going to trigger the Convocation end of turn. Although it may not matter. Opponent at six. And Farmer can make two food tokens, but that's not gonna do it. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. We have a pretty slow hand without a two drop, but some powerful threes. I'll still try it. The case of the Uneaten Feast can make up for some of the life loss from Dark Star Augur. But really hoping to find a 2 drop, especially now that we're up against Mono Red. We did not. So this is gonna be tough. Augur's not really a card you want against Hyper Aggro. But I'll try it here. So maybe a blue-red prowess deck. Could see some otters. Ideally we reveal a land to the auger. Alright, opponent's not attacking, maybe keeping up a counter spell. Found another case. So I can play case into cleric. 
Or we could play Augur with Offspring. But then if they have a Counterspell, that's probably worse for me. So, let's try that. That resolves. Deal some damage, and I may as well attack. Since I don't think the Swiss Spears are gonna stay on defense for too long. Bone had a flood caller, so now they get to pump up their critters, as well as cast sorceries at instant speed. Right, go for the throat can answer the flood caller. So let me start there. Then they may be limited in what they can cast in my turn. And then Cosmos Caller is what I really want to resolve. Yeah, kinda have to go for it here. Could have also waited to maybe pay the two to get a creature back out of the graveyard. Attack, and we get to life gain trigger, that's huge. Cleric also putting in work. Bone falls to 8. And they have another Flood Caller, makes sense. Although now just playing this with Offspring, with Double Case and Cleric in play, could do some work. Opponent does have an answer to the Cosmos Caller. And we're taking quite a beating. We're at 6. Find a Ruin Lurker Bat and Gix. So if I play this with Offspring and play Ruin Lurker, that's three creatures entering, so that should be enough to close it out here. Especially once we attack. Sweet. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. We have Double Channeler Cleric, but no way to gain life. So there's a bit of a lack of synergy here. Can give flying by losing life to our own caves of Koilos. But uh, I'll take a mulligan. And this hand is maybe a little bit better, actually. I have to get rid of one card. Could maybe bottom one Augur. Even though it's nice to have some redundancy in case they answer the first one. But maybe we'll just play it with Offspring. And then Curve Cleric into Cosmos Caller into Augur. And then for now I can still play Caves. Next turn Portal while it's still untapped. Opponent on a Bunny deck, so they're gonna go wide. And then I'm hoping to draw lanes, so next turn I can play Augur with Offspring. Opponent with a Might Caller, which also grows when Rabbits enter, and a second Mentor. Alright, that starts adding up. Could trade since I have another Caller. Could be reasonable. Since the Mentor is only going to get bigger. Although now I could play Augur with Offspring, which is probably still the better play. And then next turn, Caller can gain me some life back. We're pretty likely to draw land. Alright, hop to it. So now three Rabbits for three mana. Bones attacking with a pair of 5-5, five fives, so that hurts. I really need to find a land that's untapped. Alright, we did. So I can play Cosmos Caller and still have Go For The Throat available. And then there's no bat I want to return here. Gain some life back. Alright. 
And I'll wait to cast go for the throat. Probably gonna take out the mentor. But they could still present lethal, especially with another hop to it. Both of those trample. That's a little bit too much damage coming my way. Alright, GG's. Can jump here. And still take... 8 damage. So just enough. Yeah, if it weren't for the second hop to it, we might have been able to survive, depending on which cards the auger reveals. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. We have what looks like a Keeper. We'll need to draw a third lane, so would like to find some two mana creatures as well. Opponent also on a life gain deck. So pretty likely to be a bad mirror match. For now we can play Ruin Lurker and wait on Thrain Portal. And then hit for one. Fable Passage, as we mentioned, a way to enable Descend on the bat as well. But we've got a lot of dual lanes with the fact that we're also playing Thrain Portal, just to lose more life. So we'll see what they play next, if we need to remove it, or if we can maybe keep attacking with Gix to draw more cards. Another case. And a 1-2, yeah, that does block our... A Ruin Lurkers pretty well. So I could play Augur and then hope they can't remove it instantly. If they do I can still maybe get it back later. So that should be fine. Since it feels like a waste to use Go for the Throat on a 1-2 it's also not very mana efficient. Opponent can play their own Augur with Offspring. And yeah, with Double Case and Duo, they can easily make up for the life loss. So they will eventually pull ahead. Case is solved as well. Another go for the throat and a lance. So now I could take out both Augurs. They can still use the case to maybe get them back. But that does seem reasonable, just to shut off their card draw. Although it is quite drastic. So I can still attack with my auger. Five mana. Opponent could have a Cosmos Caller get back auger. Nope, they're gonna sack the case to get back Augur and they can play it with Offspring. Yeah, not loving my position here. Unable to attack past their creatures to enable Gix. Means we don't have that card draw. Besides the one Augur we have. Alright, find another one. So, can play it, although now the life loss is gonna add up as well. But I'll still go for it. And then hopefully we'll find our own case to make up for it. And the Cosmos Caller, if we get to attack, can also help. Opponent has another case. So they're ahead in the life gain department. But hopefully our card draw can eventually take over. The Cavern Bats, not a disaster but it does mean that they'll be able to solve their case. I guess they need to gain one more life since they've only gained three. Takes Gix. And then if they have removal, they might want to take out the token, which I cannot get back with Cosmos Caller, but we'll see. All right, so Pun lets us untap, maybe hoping we just die to our own augers. And yeah, they're dealing some damage here. Did not find more ways to gain life besides the one we have in hand. But now with Convocation, I can maybe get some uh, tokens out of it. 
If our opponent's keeping up removal, they might also be trying to take out the Cosmos Caller, and then we won't gain life for a turn, and then next turn we could die to the Augurs. So I have to weigh our options carefully. But uh, yeah, playing Channeler plus Cosmos Caller could be better than playing the Convocation here. Although this is not going to have flying in the opponent's turn, which is maybe what matters. But still, starting to grow this sooner might be better. And then I don't need to lose life intentionally. Go to attackers. And I'll send in a couple augers at least. And then I'll be able to gain a bit of life with Cosmos Caller. Don't think we're throwing away Rune Lurkers for free just yet. And with an untapped Thrain Portal, I guess we could give this flying in the opponent's turn as well if necessary. Opponent finds removal and another duo. So they can answer my caller now, perhaps, before I get a chance to attack. If they keep it up in my turn. This channeler is getting very large. Can maybe still chump it with Convocation if we can enable it consistently. But yeah, the case also representing a way to get back creatures from the graveyard means we're kind of behind here, I feel. And we still haven't found our own case to gain more life. Opponent's gonna take out Caller before I get to attack and gain life. So yeah, it's looking bad. Can go to attackers, see what they do, and then maybe play Caller second main. But then it might be too late already. I guess I can sneak in a Cleric here. Without Offspring. Now they take out Cosmos Caller. And then... Don't really have a good attack. I can send in Rune Lurker just to gain one life. To enable Convocation. Is that worth it? I don't think so. Can always jump with them. And then... I don't have to play this now. Can wait till next turn. Definitely don't want to play another Augur. So... Yeah, I guess it's just uh, Cleric Convocation Pass. Could keep up a pain land for Channeler to gain flying, maybe. And then we do get to Scry to maybe set up our next couple augers. So I'll keep a land on top since at least it doesn't hurt me. I guess uh, another Deep Cavern was a reason to still play the Caller when I had the chance. Opponent lets us untap, wants to just win by letting us lose to the augurs, I guess. Which found a bunch of lanes at least. And then draw a deep cavern for turn. But yeah, still don't have more ways to gain life now. Could go looking with uh, Mudflat Village and get back our uh, Cosmos Caller. That might be the plan. But first, have a look with Deep Cavern to make sure there's no removal waiting for us. Alright, they do. So now their channeler flies. Can move the counters. Maybe on the Rune Lurker bank to gain more life. And our opponent had a land left, so... Yeah, things did not quite work out. It's 
Still probably worthwhile to attack to make a bait end of turn. And then that's maybe it. Keep our blockers back. And then I get to uh, descend to once again get rid of expensive cards. Make some tokens. And then Deep Cavern has to go. Poon found their own convocation now, so that can be a decent mana sink. Although Triple Cavern's not doing them too many favors there. The uh, Fountain Port can also pay life at instant speed to maybe give this flying. But decides to make a fish. Gains more life. But no attacks. Alright, we're at two. And we still haven't found a case here. So, what's the plan? Get back uh, Essence Channeler, and then attack all out to grow it. Everything except for the Cleric's attack. So we're gaining life with Rune Lurker and Deep Cavern Bats, which is four more life loss with Cleric. Then I can play Convocation. And keep land on top, maybe. I guess we can bottom now. Pwns at two, which is not quite lethal, unless the Augur reveals a two drop. Opponent uses Village, finds their own Cosmos Caller, so yeah, it's our last chance to maybe steal it here with Augur. Fountain Port can sack a token, but the trigger's already on the stack. I guess making a creature here uh, triggers the duos to gain life. And I guess, yeah, with double case, they can gain quite a bit of life. Alright, so that's not great for me.
still have Thrain Portal here to give Channeler flying. And our opponent survives at two lives, so had they not activated Fountain, they would have died. Opponent plays the Cosmos Caller. And they have caves to maybe give the uh, channeler flying in my turn as well. So I will have to block the essence channeler, but I can maybe block the duo as well. And then I have three, four going through, so I probably won't die to my own auger. So yeah, I'll take it. Opponent with a sonar strike. Just to gain life, I guess. And our opponent gets a couple more bants, which gain life with a duo. So our opponent's at 16. And Essence Channeler, not exactly what I was hoping for. Yeah, I needed a case of the Uneaten Feast here, pretty much. So I probably have to draw with Convocation to try and find something. Oh, well, there's the case. Is it too little too late? Maybe I have to draw into another Cosmos Caller, but we've already seen our fair share. But that might do it, versus just playing a couple creatures out to trigger a case. Yeah, maybe that's still the safer play. Because the Channeler does have flying again. So, do we feel comfortable attacking? If I attack with the Channeler, then I can move counters onto a lifelinker. So, that's decent. Get a bunch of triggers. And then now we're back to keeping lands on top so I don't die to all the extra triggers. We're not looking at uh, Fountain Port again. This time only with one duo on the battlefield, but they should still survive here. They found another duo. At least they don't have their own cleric yet. I would like to trump with a rune lurker bank to make sure I don't die to the augurs because we do have four triggers coming up.
opponent just passing. Nothing I can do in my upkeep to gain life. Alright. We should be safe. And we found another cleric. Alright, I think we might have gotten there. Play case. Play cleric. With offspring. And that's now a ton of cleric triggers. And that'll do it. GG's, what a game. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Some hand disruption to clear a path for Augur, which can then hopefully take over. Put on black green. So maybe squirrels. Okay, let's have a look. We already have Caves of Koilos to help enable Convocation. And go for the Throats, more Ramp, and then the Bellow of the Woods to get maybe Fabled Passage and some other lands back. This also counts stuff in Exile, so if we take a creature, Swarm gets a discount. Let's just take Go for the Throat, keep it simple. And then next turn we could maybe play another bat and then play Augur with Offspring to pull ahead. Now the Forager can also tutor up other squirrels with 4 mana. For now, Wild Guide. Take two. And play another bat. And double swarm in hand, so we'll take the bellow. So this is a 6-6 six, six with menace and death touch. Opponent's got another forager. And then they can tap to give it a plus one plus one counter here. I think for now Augur with Offspring is the way to go. Alternatively, I guess I could play Convocation and go for the throat one of the Foragers to slow them down. And then we get to both gain life and lose life to uh, make an extra token end of turn. But uh, let's get the cards flowing. And this will also lose life for us, so I don't need to lose life with caves if I don't have to. Opponent gets their removal back, so now they can take out an auger or get their creature back. So we still have double auger at least. What we don't have is a way to gain life at the moment, other than our Restless Fortress, so I could take some damage. Might be worth it to play Gix just to Try and find more life gain effects. Go for the throat. Could also be used here, so they maybe don't get to 6 mana next turn. Although just taking out the bellow might be better since it does have reach, even if they might get some lands back. Uh, so this turn, I guess Gix is still reasonable. And then see what we draw. Although I'm kind of playing with fire here, if I don't find some life gain soon. Alright, just another Essence Channeler. May as well play it now, since we didn't gain life for Convocation. So had we taken out a mana creature, they still would have had enough to play a Lumra. 
And they got a lot of lanes back. I guess there's clearly a, a lanes and graveyard theme going on. Alright, found our case, that's good. And another bat. So play case, play deep cavern bat, and then we can go for the throats. Although it's not like Deep Cavern Band does a whole lot here, since they have redundant swarms in hand. Unless they would be able to play both next turn. Which, our opponent has two creatures in Graveyard, about to be three. So then, yeah, I guess they're still going to be a little short of casting both, unless they use all their mana creatures. Yeah, I guess we'll still play it as a lifelinker, it's fine. And attack. May want to leave something back on defense. The smaller auger, maybe, to trump. And then hit a land drop for a turn. So next turn, if I play Cleric with Offspring, we get two of those that will trigger off case to make the opponent lose life. Don't know if that's going to be quite enough to win the game. Maybe in combination with channel or growing. But we'll see what happens. Opponent's got plenty of mana. They can also activate Restless Cottage to make food and gain life. Or they can activate Forager to find other squirrels. They do have a lot of mana. And remember the bats also contributing to the discount here. No risk of dying to two auger triggers at eight life. Found another go for the throats. So I think uh, Cleric with Offspring is a good starting point. Maybe keeping some black mana available. So this is double black. And then I could play another Cleric as well. Which should be more than enough. Alright, and then we've got multiple flyers to cross the finish line. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. We have a keepable hand. Especially if we can find a second black source. And then Caves of Coilos potentially a way to enable the Convocation, although we also need to gain life, which we can achieve by just playing a creature. And Negotiation, so... Probably get rid of a Plains now. And ruin all their caves. So now I'm maybe more in favor of Cleric. Since we can curve Cleric into Gix. Otherwise I might have gone Convocation. So next turn I can play Cleric and both gain and lose life to make a bat token end of turn. So both are uh, valuable approaches. Maybe in the face of removal we actually prefer Convocation first. Otherwise they can disrupt Cleric into Gix more easily. Opponent's gonna have a look, but now it doesn't matter what they take since I'll still be able to both gain and lose life. I imagine they take Gix. Alright, could also go for Channeler now. I'll have to make sure I still lose life here. And then by keeping Caves untapped, I guess we could lose life at instant speed. To give this flying and vigilance if necessary. Could be a way to maybe ambush a deep cavern bat if the opponent's not paying attention. But opponent had to go for the throat. Still get to move my counters onto the bat at least. So yeah, I think playing Convocation first might have worked out for the best and we drew another one. Although I don't have a way of gaining a life unless I play another creature. So I think that's what we'll do. Hmm. 
If I had a fourth land, I could start drawing with a Convocation as well. Opponent's got another Deep Cavern Bat. All right, takes our second Convocation. This we can activate at instant speed. So now I have to decide if I want to activate in the hopes of finding something I can cast, or to better play around the discard effect, draw in the opponent's end step, could even draw twice. Yeah, since we have a lot of life to spare, I think that's reasonable. Still gonna attack with two of my creatures. And then just pass. I haven't gained life, so this is not gonna trigger. Ah, shield roots. I guess I can now draw in response, so I don't lose as much life. And our opponent's tapped out, so they can make me discard. Could now play this with Offspring as a nice card draw engine that gets around shield roots. Or we can take out shield roots, which is probably for the best. And the opponent scoops it up, play another Cleric, gains us life, trigger both Clerics making the opponent lose life, attack, and then end of turn we get to make another bat, so we're in pretty decent shape. Alright, so we get to see the Black-White life gain bats in action. And yeah, the archetypes is quite promising. Might be a little bit weak to hyper aggro decks like Monorad, which will remain popular on the latter, since the deck does tend to lose quite a bit of life. But on the other hand, we also have a nice life gain package, so we could always rebalance the deck to include a few more ways to gain life and cut some of the life loss effects instead, if we expect to face a lot of aggro. But uh, yeah, against mid range and control, having as many card draw engines as possible is quite nice. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.